Finally, after what must be nearly two years, I've actually got around to doing the next in the series of the Sam Broadcaster tutorials. Hooray, I hear you say. Well, maybe not, but thank you for sticking with me and uh, welcome to this uh, uh, tutorial from tdcat.com. I hope you're well. It's July 2015, 28th of July 2015. And today we're looking at audio processing within Sam Broadcaster. And uh, we're going to actually split this into a couple of different tutorials because I was looking at the topic and I was thinking, oh God, that's, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff to potentially cover in this. No one wants to sit through a half hour YouTube video you know if you look at a YouTube video and you see it's 30 minutes long you just think oh forget it 15 minutes maybe maximum five minutes five to ten minutes yeah that's more ideal when it's a subject you're interested in so let's get started right the first and most important piece of advice I will give you is where possible use a third-party plugin to do your audio processing don't do it using the uh, a, a, the AGC or, or um, audio processor within SAM. It's okay, but it's definitely no more than okay. And it's a little bit unreliable, a little bit glitchy, something you definitely don't want from an audio processor. So I would avoid it if you can. There are alternatives and I'll cover those in, uh, the, in, in the following tutorials. So let's go into the AGC. All your... Um, audio processors are categorized under AGC, which actually stands for Automatic Gain Control. Uh, strictly, it's a little more than an AGC, but they're all called AGC within SAM, as you can see here. And you're poss it's possible to actually have different settings for every single uh, part of SAM. So, you, you know, your, your deck A and deck B and your vocals, so your vocals and sound, uh, jingles and what have you, sound effects, can all be processed and controlled differently. And that's quite nice, actually. That's the sort of, um, particularly around the voice, you know, you'd want to EQ and uh, control your voice separately and differently than you would your music. In this particular case, I'm actually going to do it in the voice effects. And the reason for that is because when you're within the settings here, you can't do anything. You can't control anything within the interface. So I can't stop and start audio. So I'm just going to go through to start with in this tutorial, the basic sections of the processor and kind of what they're for. Uh, so let's start at the top. We have, oh, in fact, here we have pre-emphasis. So we have 50 microsecond and 75 micro, microsecond pre-emphasis. This is uh, uh, something from FM days. You don't need to worry about this at all if you're running an internet radio station. You would not use pre-emphasis. You wouldn't want to add um, any kind of sort of uh, high-end um, frequency, uh, sort of high-end EQ essentially is what it what it creates uh, in order to cater for the de-emphasis that a tuner has to do when it receives a signal. Internet stations don't need to worry about that. Okay, so uh, that's one one bit out of the way to start with. Secondly, your AGC. So this is what this is a true AGC basically. And uh, as I discussed in a recent tutorial around mastering, it can basically be described as a slow hand on the pot. As in, it's it's really uh, a gain control that's just designed to kind of gently increase or decrease the levels so that what goes into your five band processor or your dual band processor is pretty much the same irrespective of the track that's playing and that's important because the um the the characteristics of the sound will change depending on the level that comes out of this agc and how much it's driven how much the uh, five band processor or the dual band processor is actually driven by a level if Basically, if you have nothing, if you have a very low level going into a five band processor, there's not going to be much happening and you're not going to get much of a different sound to the original uh, material. So what that does is uh, it, has a, it has a certain amount of gain makeup, as it's generally known, which allows a track to, um, so for example, if you get a quiet bit in a track, it'll sort of, it'll bring up the level of that quiet bit, just a, a certain amount, not too much, hopefully you have to get that right, really. Uh, so that um, so this this part is still driven with audio, and then you have a gate on that, and what what gate what the gate does is basically stop it from increasing parts that shouldn't be increased. So if, if the audio stops dead, it'll gate and it won't bring up nothing. 
if you know what I mean. Whereas if the track slowly fades out or you have a part that just gently drops in level, it won't gate that section and it will continue to sort of make those adjustments. It just allows a sort of some sort of, um, uh, I suppose, intelligence around what is actually controlled, what is actually gain controlled and what, what isn't. Uh, the next section is a stereo expander. And this is really more for use with uh, vocals, I suppose, more than anything else. It's uh, you can use it with music, and it can it is used again more more for FM stuff. I wouldn't I would never personally use it for an internet broadcast. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, it just adds a certain sort of extra enhancement to the stereo image, as is suggested here. But um, not really not really necessary for this particular um, this particular application. Bass EQ, it's quite common to apply just a shelving EQ at the low end of your bass before it goes into a processor just to provide, it just gives us gives that sound a certain sort of loudness if you like, a certain presence because you've got a very nice solid deep bass and uh, it just basically adds a, a gentle sort of um, enhancement of that bass frequency and it's always sort of around the 60 hertz that's perfectly reasonable i think the default on this is 6 db i've reduced this to 4 db so it's just a shelving eq at bass so then we've got the five band processor which has um an initial input drive and then splits the bands it doesn't actually state on here what these bands here what these five bands are split into but they are frequencies so one being the lowest lower frequencies five being the higher um, highest frequencies and I'll prove that to you by put by playing a, um, a logarithmic sweep audio sweep to you now so watch out on if you're on headphones or if you've got the speakers on turn them down now okay because I'm just gonna play a sweep through this There you go, and as I do that, you can see how it's swept through these bands because as it goes up, these frequencies kind of, you know, it goes from the low frequencies to the high frequencies. And these, these are all controlled separately. Every, every single one has separate compressor, expander, and limiter um, settings. So the most simple type of processor is a single band processor whereby any material coming through, any music coming through that is controlled in one big uh, chunk if you like uh, there's no individual frequency control so if you get a section where there's a massive bass drum hit it brings down the entire music you know it brings down the whole lot and that works okay single band pro uh, compressors as you like if you like work okay for instruments where sort of the the actual frequencies it's playing are exclusive to that instrument uh, where but, but if you're talking about mastering or if you're talking about processing a whole song so all the instruments together and the whole lot bundled together you really need a bit more control there so here we have a dual band processor which splits the low and the high frequencies uh, which is the sort of next most simple way of doing it and uh, so that it allows those sort of high energy low elements to be controlled a little better and leaves the high frequencies to uh, to, to still be present and uh, uh, perfectly audible in the music. And the dual band processor creates a somewhat more relaxed, gentle sound, possibly good for classical music, possibly good for jazz music, something where you don't need the kind of aggressive, loud sound that you get from a five band processor. So for the type of music I'll be testing in the next tutorial, when I actually set this up and do some tweaks around the defaults, the five band process processor is what I'll be working on. Finally is the clipper and they say that this is a soft clipper which is good we don't really want a hard clipper on this type of stuff they say it's a soft clipper but you don't want to drive a clipper too hard because uh, all it's doing really is chopping the top off your waveform so as soon as a level goes above a certain amount it makes sure it keeps it within that amount but it loses detail and loses information by doing that so if you've got this driven hard and you've constantly got kind of I don't know a couple of db of level coming into this and you're saying you want to chop everything from above minus six upwards you're taking a huge amount of information away from the waveform and what you'll end up with is that that'll be audibly 
uh, it'll be very audible and it'll sound well actually sounds a bit of a mess and I'll show you that later as well so that needs to be something that's carefully watched uh, and used sensibly but it is useful to have in there to provide a final control over levels and then we've just got our input level and output level after processing uh, that's it really and then whatever goes out of there goes to your broadcast so there we go there's a brief overview of the AGC, as they call it, but essentially the audio processor within Sam Broadcaster. Join us on the next tutorial where we'll be uh, going through the default settings and making changes to them, testing it with music and just sort of giving reasons why, the why we're making the changes that we do.